turn to section three. Section three. You are going to hear a talk about computer development. Look at question sixteen to twenty-five. Now listen to the talk and fill in the form and answer the questions. The earliest form of computer was being used over 2,000 years ago, and even today it is still being used in some eastern countries. It is the simple abacus that you may have used when you were in the infant school. In 1642, a real development in computers came when Blaise Pascal invented the first adding machine. 29 years later. Gottfried von Liebenzut developed a calculator that could both multiply and divide, the world's first working computer. The analytical engine was designed by Charles Babbage in 1834. Babbage believed that his machine could be taught to do mathematical tasks. The dream of a true computer, one that could solve any number of problems, was not realized until the 1930s. In Hitler's Germany, an obscure young engineer named Konrad Zuse built a simple computer that could perform a variety of tasks. Its descendants calculated wing designs for the German aircraft industry during World War II. At Bell Telephone Laboratories in the U.S., the research arm of AT&T, a mathematician named George Sibbets, built a similar device in 1939. And even showed how it could do calculations over telephone wires. This was the first display of remote data processing. During the war, a British group, putting into practice some of the ideas of their brilliant countryman Alan Turing, built a computer called Colossus I that helped break German military codes. The British, German, and U.S. machines all shared a common characteristic. They were the first computers to use the binary system of numbers, the standard internal language of today's digital computers. By the end of the war, computers were developing quickly. In 1946, the world's first valve computer, ANIALC, was built. ANIALC vastly increased computer speed by using vacuum tubes rather than electromechanical relays as its switches. But it still had a major shortcoming. To perform different operations, it had to be manually rewired, like an old wire and plug telephone switchboard, a task that could take several days. In 1947, three scientists at Bell Labs invented a tiny, deceptively simple device called the transistor, short for transfer resistance. For a long time, however. Computers were large and complicated machines that only governments and large companies could afford to operate. Then, in the 1960s, scientists developed the integrated circuit. From then on, circuit designs could be printed onto a small piece of silicon chip. Computers could become much smaller and cheaper, and thus available to everyone. Today, they are commonplace in business, schools, and homes. In fact. One in every six homes in Britain has a computer. That's the end of section three. Now you will have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section four. Section four. You're going to listen to a lecture about sea animals. Look at questions twenty-six to forty-two.
Now listen to the lecture and answer questions 26 to 42. I'd like to welcome Dr. White to our series of lectures on biology. This is the most popular lecture we have had all year. Thank you. Today I'd like to talk about sea animals. We all know the sea occupies a greater area of the Earth's surface than the land. It is the home of millions of living. Animals and plants of the sea have various shapes, colours and sizes. Do you know that there is more life in the sea than on land? The animals and plants of the sea are very important to man as a source of food. Sea animals such as lobsters, crabs, fish and many shellfish can be eaten. Some sea plants like seaweed are also used as food. Animals in the sea range from tiny one-celled animals to huge mammals. The most well-known of all sea animals are the fish. The majority of fish live in the shallow parts of the sea. Even among the fish there are great differences in colour, size and shape. The smallest fish, the goby, is only one and a half centimetres long, while the largest fish, the whale shark, is over 15 metres long. The weight of fish can range from a few grams to about 900 kilograms. Most fish only live for a few months to a year. Although fish are so different, they have certain common features. All of them have special organs that help them to live in water. These special organs are fins and gills. The fins help the fish to swim in water. They also help the fish to steady and steer itself as it moves through the water. The gills are comb-like structures on either side of its head. The fish breathes by swallowing water and passing the water over the gills. The gills absorb the oxygen from the water. The water then comes out of the openings on the side of its head. These openings have covers, called gill covers, over them. Most fish also have air bladders. These help the fish to float. All fish have a line on either side of their bodies. It is called the lateral line and is used to detect sound vibrations and changes in water pressure. All living things, whether they live on land or in the sea, must fight to stay alive, that is, to survive. Each plant and each animal has to feed on something and at the same time avoid being eaten. Therefore, Every plant and animal has to solve this big problem of staying alive in its own way. The danger of being eaten in the sea is great. Those plants and animals that do survive usually reproduce very fast and in great numbers. The single cell plant, the diatom, can multiply itself into a billion new diatoms in one month. Certain sea animals have defense devices that help them to survive. Sea urchins, for example, grow spines to protect themselves. The sea anemone and jellyfish have poisonous tentacles which are used for attack and defence. Another method of survival which sea plants and animals use is to disguise or camouflage. They usually have the same colour as their surroundings. The sargassum fish looks very much like the sargassum seaweed among which it lives. Sharks can hide themselves because of their colouring. They are dark on top and silver on the underside and look like the colour of the water in which they live. In order to stay alive, animals need to have keen senses. Fish and some shellfish have sharp eyes. Almost all animals are sensitive to touch. Fish detect movements in the water by means of their lateral lines. Fish and other sea animals can hear well and many of them can make different types of warning sounds. In the future, you will be hearing more and more about the sea. It is one of the last training places on Earth which has not been fully explored by men. Today, more and more scientists are exploring the sea. This is because the population of the Earth is increasing so fast that very soon the land alone will not be able to provide enough food for everybody. That is why man is turning to the sea. It is like a huge storehouse. It contains not only food, also many other valuable things such as oil and minerals. The sea can also provide us with a lot of fresh water.
That's the end of section four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.